How's it going everyone? It's Tom from Mars Joint That. That was just today. It's March 9, 2021. And today we're gonna keep track of the potentially major snowstorms that could impact the Midwest this week and head it into even next week. And we'll also talk about the major severe weather threat that's expected to happen throughout the southeast as well as the southern midwest states but before i begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content so let's begin by taking a look at the gfs model 120 hours from now which is approximately five days from now and you see we have a well-defined mid-latitude cycle we see the convection occurring on the eastern side of this storm along this cold front or this rain and dry line. We also have the convection towards the northwestern portion, which is typical for a lot of these mid latitude cyclones. And we do see that cold air filtering in on the back side, which is another defining feature of a mid latitude cyclone. And when we see a mid latitude cyclone, it typically means that it has at least some sort of strength and it's bound to strengthen to rapidly intensify since most of the rapidly intensifying storms we've seen in recent memory have been mainly mid-latitude cyclones. So this isn't a good sign because this does mean that there's likely going to be very high unstable air in this region and it's going to be very prone to rapid intensification which would mean that it would dump a lot of snow throughout many states in the midwest but let me go begin at um right around this time to give you guys a better idea of how the storm will event how the storm will eventually form how all the right conditions will play out and what conditions will could potentially change the forecast in your area when it comes to rainfall snowfall severe weather whichever the case may be so let's take a look at the current radar right now based off the gfs model and like i've been saying in my many previous videos that it's been quiet for the united states but it's expected to change because there's going to be an upper level trough coming from the northwest pacific that's eventually going to move further to the southeast and along with that upper level trough there's a lot of cold air this trough came pretty much just right around the alaska region so once you bring that cold air all the way further southward to an area like the united states which doesn't typically get temperatures as cold as alaska it's just gonna bring um cold temperatures colder than average throughout the western half of the united states and i think it will be a major player in setting the stage of what will become our next or next few storms that will impact the midwest and a lot of the united states in general so let's keep moving forward and then we see right around the 36 to 48 hour mark around two days from now we see that upper level low pretty much finally make landfall in california where it's bringing a lot of precipitation throughout california and it's might be well needed for a lot of you guys in southeastern i mean southern california and a lot of arizona since you guys been in a little bit of a drought so thankfully it should help the drought a little bit but unfortunately it will set the stage for what could become a bigger storm like i will show you guys right now so if we continue to move forward you see there's a big dip in the jet stream you see that blue contour right there that's a 540 millibar contour line and we usually and meteorologists usually use that contour line as a baseline between freezing between freezing and non-freezing temperatures. If you're just north of the 540 millibar contour line, chances are you are in temperatures below freezing. While if you're just south, well, I, I wouldn't say that because Cal because Los Angeles definitely won't be below freezing, but it at least represents where the jet stream is. So it's definitely good to keep in mind where that 540 millibar contour line is because it really gives a good idea of where temperatures are at least above average or right around average or below average. And when we see a big dip in the contour line where it almost looks like it's going vertically, that represents that there's very high unstable air in this region since there's such a stark contrast. And, and the way we know there's such a stark contrast is just by a big jet stream dip, which is easily recognizable in this 
run where we do see the 540 millibar contour line dip all the way down and there's a lot of unstable air that cold dense air is going to want to filter into that warm gulf of mexico air and as it does so it forces this warm air up and that warm air holds a lot of water vapor so as it moves upwards it's going to condense and just create rapid convection and a lot of precipitation throughout the midwest and you see that as a upper level low while it comes off the, Cali the california coast fairly weak eventually it will meet it will enter the midwest where it's gonna encounter a lot of humid and warm air and just create and this warm air is going to interact with this cold air to create a very unstable environment to eventually form this trough which will eventually turn into a mid-latitude cyclone because we already see the precipitation forming as a result of this jet stream dip and we do see the storm rapidly develop and we do see the convection feeding towards the trough which is right around new mexico and we do see a lot we do see a lot of that range ch rain change over the snow especially in the higher elevations of colorado where that jet stream dip is bringing just enough cold um temperatures just cold enough to support um just to be an all snow event for you guys and then you see we can as we move forward you see that low pressure system continues to move north and i also want to point out that a also along with the snow there's going to be a lot of severe weather because look at this jet stream dip interacting pretty much with very warm and humid air that's going to cause rap that's going to cause very buoyant air molecules uh, updrafts are going to be very very strong and that will lead to rapid convection which will lead to thunderstorms and a lot of them could be severe so you guys right around texas oklahoma and extending to arkansas and even mississippi northern mississippi and um, tennessee and missouri need to pay very very close attention to this because this because uh because it seems like the computer models are now leaning towards bringing a more well-defined jet stream dip to enhance the chance of a severe weather threat or to enhance the chance of a bigger storm um it seems like the gfs model was correct in its run in its earlier runs where it was now leaning more towards a jet stream dip earlier than the european was because i remember in the video i did right around two days ago um the european was had the jet stream pretty much straightened out which meant that there wasn't a lot of unstable air to maintain the strength of this upper level trough coming from the california coast but now it seems like the european is also agreeing with the gfs let's take a look at the surface radar and precipitation you're going to see that the now the european is now leaning more towards the gfs model when it comes to the track of the storm the strength of the storm and the amount of snowfall and rainfall from this storm if we continue to move forward you see that the low pressure forms in a very similar way and fashion to the gfs model which definitely shows that the gfs model seemed more correct in its case where it was already bringing this storm up northward and a lot stronger and now since we see both the european and the gfs model agreeing somewhat it gives us confidence that there it's more likely we're gonna see some sort of major snowstorm out of this or so we're still five days out but when both the computer models are agreeing that there's going to be a major snowstorm i'd say more likely than not we will see a major snowstorm especially when both the computer models been leaning towards some sort of jet stream dip associated with the upper level low coming off the california coast so as a result i think it's more likely than not someone in the United States will experience a major snowstorm. The exact questions remain though, where exactly and who will get the impact the most when it comes to snowfall and severe weather. And what will determine the track of this is obviously, of course, how much cold air this upper level low is packing while it while the computer models now have a lot more confidence that about the amount of cold air this upper level low will be packing as it heads towards California coast which um, as now they're both computer models have determined that there's going to be just enough cold air to create a major storm and steer this up northward. There's still uncertainties regarding how much cold air this upper level low will pack because if it's a little bit more than usual, then expect a bigger jet stream dip and this storm will form earlier and move up northward 
a little bit earlier, which would mean that it will be more of a rain event for those further eastward, while for those closer to the westward, such as maybe Montana and the western Dakotas, it could be a more impactful snow event for you guys. And in terms of severe weather, if if the jet stream dip is a little bit stronger, that would not only mean a bigger, um, more potent and dangerous severe weather threat, it would also mean that the severe weather would move further to the east, which would um, may, mainly involve Texas and Oklahoma, and maybe not as much Arkansas and Missouri, and maybe Kansas as well. So it, there's definitely some, we definitely need to keep a track of how much cold air this upper level low will pack in because it will determine the orientation of the jet stream, which will in which will ultimately. Um, determine the trajectory of the storm and also the strength which is very important and we're still five days out there's still a lot to um, there's still a lot of questions to be answered we just gotta wait and see but at this point I'd say more likely than not we're gonna see some sort of major snowstorm or severe weather threat in the Midwest and the snow pressure will steer up north the question remains exactly where it will steer up north towards but the, but I think based off what we're be seeing, if this, if the scenario that both the GFS and the European model is currently correct, I'd say this might be one of the most major snowstorms, what, pro maybe the most, the biggest snowstorm in terms of the amount of snowfall um, in, in a, I'd say in a populated area this winter because the snowfall, some of the snowfall accumulation amounts, the GFS and the European model, the GFS and the European model are expecting is very scary for a lot of you guys, especially closer to Colorado. If we take a look at the snowfall forecast from the GFS model, assuming one inch of rain equates to 10 inches of snow, you're going to see that um, headed into right around the 144 hour mark, six days from now. We have a large area of over a foot of snow left and we have a pretty big area as well that's over two feet of snow and it's not only involving the higher elevations denver colorado is very well in it as well with i'd say over a foot of snow based off of what i've been seeing and it doesn't change much when we shift over to the european model when if we take a look at the european models snowfall forecast you're gonna see it's bringing major snowfall right around colorado and it's even involving nebraska a little bit where the snowfall does look scary really looking at um what the your the european model is forecasting if we take a look right around 150 hours from now um oh um let me um let me turn on the cursor the cursor readout because to show you guys the uh, amount of snow forecasted. So in the next 150 hours, the European is expecting close to 30 inches and in some cases over 30 inches of snow in some areas in Nebraska. Now, there's still a lot of uncertainty because we're still, I'm forecasting this right around five to six days out, which definitely becomes more uncertain. But um, with both computer models, leaning towards a big snowfall it's definitely concerning but again we need to just wait and see while i do think some sort of major snowstorm will come out of this upper level trough I, i'm not um we still have to wait and see if it's gonna be this bad and if it's this bad it could be historic for some of you guys so you guys need to pay close attention to that and not only the snow will be the issue it's also the rain associated with this trough that's expected to form because if we um and also the severe weather as well like i pointed out so if we if we go back to the radar you're going to see that very heavy rain is going to be associated with this um over the next several days and it won't be entirely from um the first the trough i was talking about we're also going to see some rain on the back side of this first so precious system that will become before the bigger low pressure system and it will also dump some snow right around the midwest right around thursday so you guys need to pay close attention to that because it could be definitely it could definitely create chaos even though it might not be a ton of snow 
Um, but it but the rain event could start as early as Thursday, where we do see rain on the back side. It isn't a ton of rain, but we do certainly do see precipitation, which will add on eventually. And then once this chop comes in, you see since there's gonna be rapid intent um convection and sort of intensification as a result of this jet stream dip creating very strong updrafts and very buoyant air molecules and water vapor we're going to see very heavy rain and it's going to be over a long period of time and we do see the yellows i wouldn't be surprised if splash flooding could be the issue with this and um and also the unstable air associated with this chop will bring a very potentially potent severe weather threat where i think damaging winds could be forecasted and small hail or even large hail depending on how much unstable air there will be if we take a look at the at the um, upper level winds or i'd say the mid-level winds right around the 500 millibar right around the 500 millibar height you're going to see that once we go right around the 120 hours now you see the mid-level winds are very strong and that's scary because if there's strong enough wind shear there could be a tornado threat and as and it and this wind shear also shows that there's a lot of unstable air in this region so it's definitely plenty for some um it's definitely plenty of wind for a severe weather threat so it could definitely be major and you guys need to take be very aware of this in the Midwest because you could experience large hail and heavy rain and flooding and as well as damaging winds and potentially a tornado threat. So keep that in mind headed into later this week and into this weekend. But in terms of my snowfall forecast bit and rainfall forecast based off of the two main computer models, I pretty much averaged them out. I've since I synthesized their information to make it into one easy to read map and you see well it's maybe it's not that easy because there's a lot of stuff on screen but um but for the snowfall you do see that there's a large area of 6 to 12 inches forecasted by the computer models and i do think that it's certainly possible um if this slow pressure system gets itself going and as of right now I, i'm forecasting an area of 24 to 36 inches especially in the higher elevations and Denver isn't too far from that where the darker where the where the purple that's a little bit lighter is 12 to 24 inches which is still considered major even 6 to 12 inches of snow is still considered major and then we do have 3 to 6 just outside of that but in terms of rainfall it becomes even more concerning because rainfall and flooding is one of the leading causes of is pretty much a leading cause of death in the United States. So you don't want to underestimate flooding, especially right around the Ohio River Valley, where a lar currently a large area of three to six inches should be forecasting in your area. So you need to keep in mind the flooding and one three just outside of that, and then right around one inch just outside of that. Again, this is subject to change. Um, um, these are snowfall forecasts around five days out and also rainfall forecasts five days out, which is a relatively long time when we're talking about a short-term forecast. So you, you guys need to um, just stay aware to your forecast. Just be um, be prepared for any drastic changes because I do think that there could be drastic changes over the next several days. But as of right now, it's looking like a very major severe weather and snowfall day. And you guys need to be pay close attention to this for this week. But anyways, guys, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. If you want to see more about the content, make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more about the content. I hope you guys have a good day.